hey kids, today the church remembers Elijah who spent more than a little bit of time mad at God. And that's actually okay. See, when God makes promises, you're allowed to actually believe them and expect good things from him. So Elijah stays with a widow and her son during the midst of a famine. And um, God miraculously feeds all of them until he up and kills her kid. And Elijah's mad. He just actually tends to direct it in different ways than we tend to. See, the widow, she, uh, she goes looking for someone to blame. She blames Elijah. What have you against me, O man of God? Uh, she wonders, is it her sin? Is it the prophet's presence? Like, what did she do? Because somebody has to be at blame when things go wrong. But Elijah passes right over all of that. He actually blames God. He cries out to the Lord, Oh Lord, my God, have you brought calamity even upon the widow with whom I sojourned by killing her son? Then he stretched himself over him three times, crying out to the Lord, Oh Lord, my God, let this child's life come into him again. And the child lives. See, he blames God because, well, the one who actually promises to take away the sins of the world actually gets to carry them here. And so instead of trying to rip them back, find us something else to blame down here, even in the midst of anger, all Elijah has is hope. And so even in the midst of, of anger, he three times falls over the child and recognizes something deeper. The reason that God took upon himself the sins of the world is so that he wouldn't see this little child dead either. He's not going to argue about fault. He bears it himself. He takes the barbs of Elijah. He carries the sins of the widow. He even takes upon himself the death of the child. Jesus dies to make them all his own. And he brings back life to the child, to Elijah, to you, and to me. And so today, the church remembers Elijah.